Hey guys, I'm Jane Dupree and today I will be explaining to you the most important thing in pool. Uh, the thing you really need to get down and that is the physics behind pool. How do the balls work I guess is how I could say that. But I'm going to use a striped ball in this demonstration. The thing I will be demonstrating today is speed, uh, spin, and anything I can think of in between that. So we're going to start with speed and I am just going to first demonstrate these are all physics laws that I will be showing you. Oh, I'll also show you angle of incidence and angle of reflection off of the rail, but I'm explaining to you the physics behind pool. So when you hit a ball, to know what speed to hit it to make it towards the pocket, whatever speed this cue ball is going when it hits it, that's the speed that this ball will go. Uh, and obviously the energy decreases as it moves forward, it loses its energy, but if you hit too slow, it'll only go that, it'll go the speed that it hits it at. So that contact point speed is the initial speed of this ball, uh, if not a little bit slower. So that's how you know how hard you have to hit the ball if you hit it like that. Oh, I was closer than I thought, but that would probably be pocket speed. If I hit it like this, it wouldn't make it towards the pocket because that contact area, that contact speed was not fast enough. So anything above that, what I just showed you, will pocket the ball. So that is the first tip behind the physics of pull. The speed of the contact, the speed that the cue ball contacts the object ball is the same speed that object ball will go out. So again, the speed that the cue ball hits this ball, that's the same speed that that will continue at. Uh, so very, very good to know for your speed control. Now we're about to get fairly intricate. Uh, I'm going to swap out the cue ball for the tin ball so you can see the spin on the tin better. So the first shot I'm gonna show you is a simple stop shot. So that's when you just stop the ball right where it is. So to do that, we're hitting either center if it's really close or just below center on the ball. Uh, so let me see if I can grab the IQ where it is, my training cue ball. Here it is. Wait, no, it's not. It was in this pocket the whole time. We're, if it's close, we're hitting center. If we're hitting close at a fast speed, it's center. Uh, but usually it's going to be a little bit below the center of the ball. So we're hitting right there. When we hit center on this ball when it's really close, the cue, the cue ball, imagine this is the cue ball, is not rolling forward, nor is it spinning backwards. So this is just sliding across. It's just a good slide, and once it hits that ball, all the energy is gone, and it just stays right there. Now, if you want to hit slower, you can look at my uh, stop shot video that I posted a few days ago. If you want to hit slower, and it does that. So you hit too low and too slow. So the physics behind that is when you hit really, really low on your cue ball, it'll start spinning, and then it'll go into the sliding phase, and before it contacts it, it's rolling forward. So you need the speed. Uh, you need to find the speed to where that ball is sliding when it hits it. Because then all the energy is removed from your cue ball and it just stops dead center. If you hit too low, now we're going into the draw shot. So first of all, this is a draw shot. See how it just spins backwards. So the physics behind that, when you hit low on your cue ball, uh, for that one, it is about right here, that B. We're hitting the B. When you hit that low, the tip goes underneath it, like that, and it goes straight through it. And this ball is spinning backwards as it moves forwards. Once it contacts this ball, it needs to be contacting the ball as it's spinning backwards. Because if it's sliding, then it'll just stop. Uh, so this is where your speed control comes in. So as it's spinning backwards, it's hitting this ball, and then once it hits that ball, all that backspin is released, and however fast and however much spin you hit it, 
uh, comes back. And you're going to have to kind of mess around on your table to figure out your draw control. That is called draw control. So watch this tin ball spin backwards. I'll see if I can replay that slow motion so you can see it spinning backwards. But now we can move on to top spin. Okay, so top spin is very self-explanatory whenever you hit the top of the ball. So for this example, we're hitting anywhere from just above the C to the A. So this stands for above center, so the A's, B, C's of pool. Above center and below center, we are hitting the A. And that is very similar to the draw shot, except we're putting top spin on it now. So it's rolling forward once it hits the ball. And usually when you hit with center ball, a little bit of top spin put on it, it'll start sliding, and then you'll see it roll forward like that. Uh, but it starts that sliding, and we hit really slow, so that sliding is stopped. There's three major motions of pull. It's spinning backwards. As it loses that speed, it starts sliding. As it loses more speed, it starts rolling forward. So if you get to the top of this ball, you can still have that speed and the rolling forward if it's needed. So when you hit it at the top, it's just going to be rolling forward the whole entire way. No sliding, no spinning backwards. Uh, and that just follows it right forward. It's called a follow shot uh, because the ball usually follows it. So if you needed this to spin forward, you would use top spin or follow. So very basic concept, when you hit at the top of the ball, it starts rolling forward and then it just it knocks it and it, that forward energy is released, that high action is released. So now I'm going to take a couple of seconds to explain about a uh, side spin. So off of a rail, it's going to be very, very simple. When you're hitting straight off of a rail, so say we're hitting straight, left spin swings it to the left. If we're hitting straight with right spin, hitting on the right of the ball, it spins it to the right. So that's pretty much true if you have like a angle. If you're hitting into an angle and you're using the opposite side, like if this ball naturally with no spin goes to the left, then left spin is what you call running English. It kind of speeds up the angle, the speed, I mean, this, I'm using a lot of words, the spin takes off of this rail since it naturally goes to the left, then that will increase the speed. So that went three rails and that other one went just one. So with center ball, it goes one rail. With running English, it goes three. So that widens the angle uh, and it speeds up the ball without you having to hit hard. But if you use reverse English, it would be the opposite of going left. So right spin. That kind of kills that speed. You saw a kill. So on the running you just went with three rails and then some. And this one we went uh, three rails barely. So you, you can see the spin kind of think about what it's doing. It kind of takes, it takes off of this rail. You'll see it spinning from here. And then it'll kind of slow down some more here. And then it will really just kind of lose all of its energy off of this rail. And that's the physics you needed to be able to understand when you're playing position, what, what rail will it just kill off of? Uh, and it's usually the transition from this rail to this rail that it kills. So running English and opposite English, just determine which way the ball would go. If it's hitting off that rail at that angle, if it's going to the right naturally, then right spin is running English, left spin is opposite English. Pretty basic concept. Of, a lot of people have questions on this. If you have any more questions, just comment them down below. So this last little topic, I'm going to explain this very briefly, it's very easy to understand. The angle that a ball goes into the rail is the exact same angle that will come out. So if a ball goes into the rail at about a 15 degree angle or something like that, it will come out at a 15 degree angle. So this is a law of physics. This is a physics law of whatever angle it goes into the rail is the exact same angle that it will come out. That's referred to uh, in the physics world, the same angle, angle of incidence equals angle of reflection. Uh, that's the fancy term for it. But I'll usually call it same angle in, same angle out. Same angle into the rail, angle into the rail is the same angle out of the rail. So that is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. 
I really hope you enjoyed. If you did, please click the like button down below. If you want to be notified when I post again, you can click the subscribe button and then the bell icon right next to it. That'll just send you an email and notification saying that I've uploaded a new video. Thank you guys so much for 12,000 subscribers. That is very, very, very large number of people. So I just want to thank you for all of those subscribers. Uh, we're at 12,300 now, not meaning to exclude those 300, but 12,000 is a big milestone. Thank you guys so much for that. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, leave them down below. If you have any tutorial requests, tutorials you want me to show, leave them down below or email them to me and I will be sure to get back to you. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.